Hey everybody, welcome back to the Build Show Network. Steve Basic here. I'm back down in Columbia, Missouri. What are we talking about today? We're talking about hanging it out there. And what is that? It's a cantilever deck system. Look at this beauty. Done by Russell Built Steel Fabricators down here in Columbia, Missouri. The general contractor is Jake Bruton, longtime friend of mine. You can see here, it's a cantilever deck that comes out. The only two connections are these two eight by eights that are connected to the drop sections of these board form posts, concrete posts here, and everything basically flies out there. Um, if you wanna get that stronger explanation, jump back, check out that video where I talk about the building elevation, and you'll be able to understand why we chose to do this deck in this cantilevered situation. But let's jump up top side, because I think there's a couple building science aspects of this that are really important. So I'll see you up on top side. All right, so we're up here top side. Kind of feel like Rocky in the corner of the ring here, but you notice here, we have that cantilevered frame. And yes, for you guys on the Build Show Network, I take my life into my own hands. I drag my 150 pound frame out here to the edge of the cantilever and I do a little bit of a bounce. Sturdy as can be. You can see that the angles here are pre-drilled we're gonna put our decking down and we'll screw up through those holes into the decking to secure the decking. So basically it's a whole series of blind fasteners. On the upper rail here, we did a one inch square tube. We have stainless steel rods and this is gonna get finished with a nice um, wood handrail here to match the floor decking. Emmett, the steel fabricator made all of our um, support bars here and balusters. He did a beautiful job leaving the corner open here just as I wanted. It still maintains that four inches for code. But the real key, the building science key to this deck is right here. You can see here, no part of this deck connects to the house whatsoever. It's fully isolated from connecting to the house. And in building science, we call that a thermal break right? So that there's no conductivity of this deck when it gets cold, any of that cold reaching the house or better yet, the heat in the house coming out through the metal is really the way to say it. So, but there's that thermal break. We'll finish off the wall here and uh, we'll have one hell of a system. A little side note, you notice this little metal panel in the wall here. That's a Simpson strong wall. And basically what it is, is because we have such a wide opening here and we have very little bit of wall to develop any shear strength to keep the house from racking, we have to insert this very thin steel wall inside there and it's held to the inside. So it's gonna be fully insulated on the outside of that wall, but that'll take care of that racking strength. So anyways, let's jump back to the studio. We'll pull out some drawings of this deck system and we'll talk about it a little bit more in detail. See you back there. Hey, everybody. So hopefully you enjoyed that trip. Man, that deck is looking pretty cool, isn't it? I uh, printed out some details to uh, show you how we got to that point, where we can talk about the things I thought of. And uh, of course, we've got our great friend, Big Red here, Sharpie. Um, and uh, we're going to go through some of those details, some of those drawings that I printed out. We'll talk a little bit more about that cantilever deck system. So let's dive into it. All right, so let's dive into this cantilever deck here. So what I basically have is I have the foundation detail and then I have the upper side elevation detail. So you can see here there is that concrete footing that we talked about out there and that we saw and there it is right there. So you can see that, that concrete footing, we made the shelf, so we have something to attach that base plate to. So we have our four large anchor bolts that go deep embedded into that. We have our one inch thick steel base plate there, and that gets leveled out and then packed in there with a non-shrink grout. But notice that those anchor bolts go down to a series of, you know, these are stirrups, and stirrups are basically, they go around like that vertically oriented. So they're they're basically these rectangular pieces that hold the vertical port 
part together there, the vertical bars. So we have these large vertical bars that go all the way down into the footing. And then notice we have the three stirrups up by the anchor bolts that are tied in. And then we jump to a 12 inch center on those stirrups all the way down. So in effect, what you have here is you have this kind of rebar cage where you have those four pieces of bar rising up through there. And then as they go up to the top, you'll have the two anchor bolts that then tie into that system in plan. So those stirrups go around. And then as you get into the footing, you have a whole series of horizontal bars that make a cage there. So we have them basically um, in both directions. And then, of course, lastly, there's the piece of rebar that goes up here and connects to the anchor bolts that takes care of the attachment of the floor frame of the house. But uh, by, by having that step, it allowed us to get that attachment and then have that deck come in here. There's that eight by eight post, but have that deck come in here and be kind of uh, dimensionally compatible. Oh, sorry, up here, not down there, up there, and be dimensionally compatible with that floor system. Right. So that you just basically step out and we'll have that little, I don't know, maybe about a one inch crack there between after the siding and everything gets built out and the deck system there so that any rainwater or whatever, there's, we're just not connected. Anything can fall through there. Um, let's jump over to the, uh, elevation here. So on the elevation, again, you can see there's the anchor bolts. They come up to that base plate. Base plate sits on a bed of non shrink grout series of stirrups there. And then the large bars that come rising up. But basically the deck has two attachment points. There's this eight by eight steel post here. And there's one on each side. So there's another one over here somewhere. And those are basically I think, 16 feet apart on center. And those eight by eights go to that one inch base plate. The one inch base plate is, uh, bolted down into the anchor bolts that are embedded inside that concrete footing. And then what happens is in between basically these two eight by eight goal posts, we have this steel bar or steel tube, sorry, that runs in between them. And that steel tube is a 12 by four by a quarter inch tube beam, high strength steel. And, uh, so that runs in between the two posts and basically makes it, right? So you have post on that side, post on this side, and then that four by 12 basically turns that into an H system. Now on the side of that 12 by four, or four by 12, we then have seven inch angles that you can see here. They go to a certain point and then we cut them to taper. And they go out to a steel tube out here that's two and a half by four inches. So we have this pair of angles that are seven inch by four inch by three eighths. And they basically sit back to back. So they're like that. This is seven. That's four, four, seven. And then the thickness is three eighths. And we also had a space in here that we welded in some plates and that's three eighths of an inch that way there if we got any water in the system it was able to drain because if you just take the two angles and you put them close like that you have the potential to hold water there so you know me i like to get uh, water management into all the details and get rid of it as, I, as soon as i can so so we have those back to back with a three eighth spacer plate there and again those go to a point of roughly 32 inches, 33 inches, and then they're forced to taper. Because when you looked at the elevation from last week's video, remember how I talked I wanted things to be solid and disseminate to the most airy. So even with the deck being a, a part of the overall elevation, but all those rules need to apply so that we start out with a 12 inch beam here and we finished it with a solid steel plate that went up, but notice that that solid steel plate also tapered down to 
that four inch tube on the end. So basically the structure of the house finishes with that four inch tube. And the seven inch angles at that 33 inch mark, they become shorter than the seven. So Emmett had to cut the taper and uh, put those in. And then we basically have our balusters and they get welded to that outside plate. And then he built those one inch tube cages and then welded in some stainless steel rod for our railings there. So we ended up with that beautiful cantilever deck that gets tied back into this very large footing, pretty much doing a bunch of the work down underground there. So people can go out and hang out on that deck. I've been out there and it holds my 150 pound frame, no problem. So a um, couple other things to note, the top of the post here, notice that I called for a slope top. So we do have a little slope top. It's not a lot, just a half inch over the eight inches. But again, you don't ever want to build something like that, that, you know, if we, if you get a little puddle of water or snow or anything, it's going to sit in there and it's going to always challenge your structure. Down and out applies. So the top of those posts have that little half inch slope over the eight inches there so that we get rid of the water down and out. Get rid of it. Um, lastly, we did, because of the way the post was, we actually have these little almost seven inch angles that get cut off the back here. That allowed us to get our deck out there. Um, but we still needed to get that connection so that as we build the house inside it, that's going to come in in here and then have that floor frame. So we get that down to that, you know, one inch mark there. So nothing's ever going to fall through there, but water and everything can fall down, drip down, down in between the deck and the house there. So hopefully we get many, many years of, uh, time out on this beautiful deck out there to appreciate the views off the top of the hill. And uh, yeah, that's everything I thought about when it came to that cantilever deck. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and uh, that's it for now. All right, everybody. Well, that was certainly a treat talking about that deck. Um, one of the nicest features I think I put on a house. So very excited to, to see it. Uh, very excited to see it come to a finish. Although part of me says I'd never want to see it finished. I want to prolong the construction of it perpetually, but all good things must come to an end. And not only that, but then that pushes us forward to come out with the next uh, level thing. So I'm looking forward to seeing what that is. But until then, we'll put Big Red to sleep. And uh, if you haven't checked out some of our previous videos, go back, check them out. I got you know, a couple dozen videos out there, all kinds of cool stuff that we're doing. Uh, Alex and I are hard at work uh, through the holiday season here, pushing out more work. So next year is going to be truly exciting. I guarantee you that. But uh, check out my colleagues, Matt, Jake, Brent, Wade. Great content from those guys. Um, as always, you can find me on Instagram at Stephen Basic Architect. And uh, you can follow Alexandra there, too. She's at Alexandra Bazek. And uh, let's find out what our office is up to between the two of us and uh, what we're posting. And then lastly, you can find me on the Unbuilded podcast. I team up with Jake uh, Bruton and Peter Yost. And uh, we talk about everything building industry with a specific uh, undertone of uh, building science there. We, we break down some what people consider very complex building science topics and uh, break them down into some common knowledge. So, and then we discuss it, but anyways, I'm signing off. That's build show network. I'm Steve Bazek. And uh, until next time, long live our buildings.